Revelation chapter 20. Are you there? Would you stand for the reading of the Word of God? Is that all right, preacher, if I asked him to do that? Verse number 11, look what the Bible says here. It says, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. I'd like to talk to you just for a few moments on believing, believing what John saw. Wow. Believing what John saw. Lord, I pray that you'd help us arrest our hearts and minds many times because we're saved. We can sit and allow a message like this to uh, try to slide it over to a person next to us. But in all actuality, whether we're saved or whether we're lost, this message applies to us. Uh, Lord, we need a greater burden for souls. And help us today, I pray, O oh God, to see men lost in darkest eternity. And we have the light for the world to see Jesus, the light of the world. Help us to uh, be encouraged in our heart to be a greater witness for you. And then, Lord, I pray for that one, whether it be a boy, a girl, a mom or dad or uh, an uncle, whoever it may be, O oh God. God, I pray that you touch their heart this morning and help them not to leave this place lost. Uh, whether, that, whether, they, whether they've been in church a long time or not doesn't matter. It's important that they have their name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And I pray, oh God, today would be that day. And we'll sure love you and thank you for what you do in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You may be seated. In John chapter number 1 and verse 12, the Bible says, uh, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God even to them that believe on his name the Bible says I'm glad I believed on his name amen and uh, it's important that we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and believe what God's word says we take it by faith amen uh, we walk by faith not by sight well I've never seen well there's a lot of things you've never seen but doesn't make it that it's not real amen and the Bible is true from beginning to end. We believe that, right? Uh, we believe that God's word is true. And so believing is so important. Uh, in Revelation 21 and verse 8 right here, uh, just below our text, it says, but the fearful, now notice this, and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So here he says the unbelieving. So you have the believing and you have the unbelieving here in our text we have a man and all through the book of Revelation it's very interesting to me John is a man who uh, many times makes this statement I John saw or I saw what does that mean? he saw something with his physical eyes something that was going to happen something that is yet to be and he said I saw these things you remember he said I turned and I saw the Lord Jesus he said I turned and saw him there and I saw this uh, person this voice that spoke to me uh, and he uh, I began to describe him he's talked about uh, how that he saw heaven and he talks about how he saw angels and he talked about how he saw judgment come upon this earth what's he saying he said I saw these things and the reason I saw them is God wanted me to relate them to you get this so that you can believe yeah. believe is very important Believe is very important. The only op uh, opposite to that is unbelieving. And unbelieving, according to Scripture, will put you in a class of people that's going to face a fiery inferno one day. So John saw, said, I saw these things. Stay with me for a few moments. I'd like to try to rush through this, but take enough time to get, get you the understanding of what God has given us tonight, Lord willing, if the preacher allows us to preach again, uh, and if the Lord allows us to preach again, uh, we'll be doing something that will be dealing more with uh, Christian life. But this morning, the Lord just would not let me get away from this particular passage this morning. So he has a purpose for it. I first of all want you to see in verse 11, it says, And 
eye saw. What did John see? Well, here's what he saw. He saw the greatest of horrors. The greatest of horrors. See, John saw on Calvary the great hope that could be received by mankind. But now, in this particular passage, John sees here the greatest horror, the greatest of horrors because of the rejection of mankind. Man, here in this passage, has said no to God. Here in this passage, man has rejected Jesus Christ. Here in this passage, they are not believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. And so therefore, John says, I'm seeing people who have rejected Jesus Christ. And it's the greatest horror that you could ever pay for any money. You say, what do you mean, the greatest horror? Well, I would say this. Uh, have you ever had a horror uh, in your life? Maybe a horror story or you watch some video or something that caused you to be horrified. Uh, that That's scary. Would cause your heart to be gripped with fear. But would you listen to me a second? You have never, you have never seen a horror as great as this horror because the very earth and heavens will flee from the face of God Almighty. It won't just be mankind's heart failing with fear. It will be the very earth and heavens will disappear from Jesus Christ. I'm seeing this great horror. Notice with me a clear description. I've got several things to give you. Watch this now. A clear description. Notice what it says in your text, verse 11. He says, a great white throne. What did you see, John? I saw a great white throne. It's interesting to me, and I'd just like to draw a parallel if I could very quickly. In John cha or Revelation chapter number 4, he saw another throne. Right. Oh man, I'd sure love to preach on that throne for a little while. What's that throne all about? That's where the redeemed yeah. are gathered around. Are you listening to me? He's talking about a throne that he saw in heaven that you and I, and it's a, it's a picture of us. One day the door of heaven will be opened, the trump will sound, and we'll head out of here, and the redeemed will gather around that particular throne, and there will be praised and hallelujahs and glory to the Lamb of God. Oh my goodness, what a time that's going to be. But here he says, I saw another throne. Who are those gathered about these thrones? Those, those who have rejected the very Son of God. The rejecter's judgment is what we're facing with here. A great white throne, he said. Notice several things. First of all, great depicts intense fear. The reality is seen here. See, the antediluvians mistook God's inaction as either for his non-existence or his indifference towards things. But I'm here to tell you, God is not indifferent towards sin. And God is not. Uh, he is not. Uh, he's, uh, he, he does exist. He's a person that is real. And God Almighty sees what's going on. And here at this great white throne. The Bible says that there is a hymn we're going to talk about in a moment that sits upon this throne. It is the very God of heaven and there he is in intense fear as those that will gather around will finally realize that there is a great white throne judgment. Mm, that God was paying attention. That God was in charge. And now they must answer to the very God of heaven. I'm saying it's unprecedented. There's never been a throne like this throne. There's never been a judgment like this judgment. You may go in the courts of this land and there's a judge that may be paid off, if you will, behind the scenes uh, and give a lesser sentence. Uh, there may be a judge who may change their mind. But I'm here to tell you, the God on this throne will not change his mind because man has rejected him. And the only conclusion is eternal death in a place called the lake of fire. It's intense, unprecedented, but I want to say this. It's been an unheeded throne. See, this throne, preacher, has been preached all across our country from pulpits, whether it be on the sawdust trail or whether it be in great ch uh, churches and metropolitans across our country or whether it just be in a little city or a little town in the back of nowhere. This pulpit has rung out that there will be a throne that you will appear before one day if you don't accept Jesus as your Savior. And people have taken and they have thumbed their nose and walked out without God. 
See, Galatians chapter number 6, verse 7 says, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth that shall he also reap. Ah, I'm here to say God Almighty is paying attention and He is one day going to stand or uh, sit upon this throne and issue out judgment. See, the, the interesting thing we need to understand about this is here He is not coming with healing in His wings. Oh no. Here He is coming with thunder in His voice. Here He is coming pronouncing judgment upon those who rejected Him as Savior. I'm saying it's a great throne but then I want you to see the next word gotta hurry white this speaks of impartial finding it speaks of revealing see God is holy he's righteous he's pure well you know I'll just uh, pull myself up by my bootstraps and I'll make it there uh, you know after all I've been and, and, and don't get mad at me but I've been a Sunday school teacher or I've been a deacon or I've been a preacher or I've been this or I've been that it really does not matter a hill of beans what you have been the important fact is what have you done with Jesus who died who shed his blood for your sin what have you done with Jesus that's what matters he's holy he's righteous nothing will come before his presence nothing will enter into that place that is not holy and is not righteous and oh my goodness you got me on a rabbit trail now I'm so glad one day Jesus Christ saved me from my sin I'm so glad one day I became holy not because I'm holy but because he's holy I became right not because I'm righteous but because he's righteous oh I'm telling you hallelujah to God he clothed me in his righteousness now I stand under shame now I know without a doubt where I'm going can I ask you this morning do you know do you know for sure where you're going has Jesus clothed you in his righteousness I'm saying here things are revealed see man's pride that stood in the way our brother this morning what a wonderful job in Sunday school this morning talked about pride and how pride hinders us from getting right with God pride hinders us from trusting Christ I've seen people wrestle with their salvation who have been in church for years and years in fact I was in one service in fact as Dr. J. Harold Smith was preaching God's three deadlines he's preaching it there in uh, uh, Little Rock Arkansas and we were there and, and he was preaching as he's preaching he began to talk about those uh, deadlines that got to the invitation time and there was a man who was an evangelist out there and he said someone here the Lord has laid on my heart somebody here has been preaching for seven years and you've never been saved that man fell on his face and he said it's me his wife began to scream oh God my, son, my husband he's told people how not to go to hell but he's going to hell himself. Yeah. I'm saying it doesn't matter who you are. It matters is Jesus in your life. Yeah. You say, preacher, are you trying to scare me? No, 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 no. I'm not obligated to scare you. I'm obligated to tell you the truth this morning. And the truth is this. It doesn't matter where you are in your spiritual stature. Are you born again? Yeah. Do you know Jesus? Do you know Jesus? So... Man's pride, perversion, perverting the gospel, trying to add to procrastination. Well, well, Lord, wait a minute. Oh, no, no. On that day, it'll all be revealed. Just what stopped you from receiving Jesus. Then I want you to see about this throne declares an impending fate. This is the ruling. See, he'll say on this day, everlasting fire. On this day will be eternal fire. On this day, a person will be engulfed in those flames. Isaiah chapter number 66 speaks about those who literally are like they are swimming in this lake of fire in agony and in pain. It won't be a moment. It won't be a second. It won't be annihilation as some say. It'll be eternal. Eternal fire burning forever and ever. Oh God help us. Listen to this. May I echo the voice of the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah 33 14. The sinners in Zion are afraid. Fearfulness has surprised Surprise the hypocrites who among us shall dwell with the devouring fire. <laughs> 
Who among us shall dwell with everlasting burnings? Oh, in this day, as Isaiah is speaking, he's looking about those people who profess a name, profess to be godly, and he looks out about them and says, who among us? Which one will it be that will, will be burning in a place called hell? And I, oh, oh, my heart this morning, I wonder who among us, maybe that person one day will stand at the great white throne judgment and hear him say depart from me for I never knew you oh my we find a clear description he saw a great white throne but then real quickly we find a conferred duty what do you mean look at your bible again and I saw a great white throne comma and him him well, who is this him from whose face the heavens and the earth fled away? Who is this person? Well, in verse number 12, the best commentary, as our brother said, on the word of God is the word of God itself. In verse number 12, and it says, I saw the dead, small and great, stand before doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure this out. The person on this throne is God. Yes. <laughs> it, is, <clears throat> it is very God. Oh, they ridiculed him. They mocked him. They jeered him while he was here. They said, thou art not the son of the living God. And I'm here to tell you, on this day, he'll judge them and say, I am very God. Yes. There he is. There he is upon this throne. A conferred duty. Him why he's deserving of this throne see what is his certifications well I'm glad you asked how about his condescension he came down oh he came a long ways down someone alluded to it this morning may have been your boy I got all kinds of stuff out of your Sunday school lesson man you blessed my heart amen uh, it, it may be uh, someone here he's reached way down but I just want to say he reached way 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 down when he got me but I'm so glad he came down hallelujah he came down his condescension he got up from his throne listen listen now he got up and he became man he got up and he became sin he got up and he became my substitute he got up and he became my savior I'm here to say he came down he became man he became sin he became a substitute but he became my savior hallelujah to God. there he is qualifications there he is upon that throne and he deserves the right to be judging all mankind there he is his crucifixion and his resurrection I don't have time I won't go to them but Philippians 2 5 through 11 you can read it Hebrews 12 verses 2 and 3 you'll find it that he's deserving of this throne but then I want you to see him that sat on it notice he is dreadful upon this throne isn't it interesting that while he was here he came and he said the son of man or I didn't come into this world I'm going to paraphrase not do damage to scripture but he said I didn't come into this world to condemn the world he, he said I come that the world might have life <laughs> oh man you get me on another little rabbit trail I got to get done here but he said, I've come that you might have life. Well, a lot of people, uh, they look like they're breathing on their people. That's about all they're doing. <laughs> I said, a lot of people in church, uh, they look like they're at least breathing on the pew. They got life. But can I tell you, he didn't just give us life. He said, I gave you life, and I might give it more abundantly. With God, everything more, more more about Jesus what I know more of his love to others show I'm here to say hallelujah to God our life ought not just be it ought to be glory be to the Lamb of God who lives and rules forever upon his throne it ought to be that it does something in our heart and our soul I told you if you quit bringing up things I'll get done with this thing amen he's dreadful he didn't come to condemn the world but now in John 3 17 through 19 you'll say that they already abide under condemnation 
Uh, he, uh, what is it? John 3, 36. He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son hath not life. But the wrath of God abideth on him. Well, I'm here this morning. I've never been saved. Please listen to me. The wrath of God already abides on you. Well, how? How can I appease it? How can I satisfy that wrath? I'll tell you how. Call out to him who on a cross one day I cried out these words. It is finished. Hallelujah to God. Your price tag was paid in full when Jesus shed his blood for your sin and appeased the very wrath of God Almighty. Mm, he's dreadful on this throne. But then I want you to notice this. He is declared upon this throne. This speaks of confirmation. What do you mean? Well, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Corrupt are they. They have gone astray, the Bible says. But I'm here to say on this day, there will be no atheist. Are you hearing me? On this day, there will be no agnostic. There will not be anyone who does not look him eyeball to eyeball and say of truth, Thou art the Son of the living God. Thou art God. They'll proclaim who he is. Well, not me, buddy. I will, oh, yes, you will. There won't be a person who will get by without looking Jesus eyeball to eyeball. Are you listening to me? We'll, we'll, we'll kneel before him and look at him and give him honor and glory that is due his name. Why? Because Philippians chapter 2 said, it's for the glory of God the Father. You'll not get by without telling the Son he's exactly who he said he was. Amen. The confirmation. Mm. Yes, we find a clear description. I'm hurrying. We find a conferred duty, but then we see a confirmed date. You say, what do you mean? He said, I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heavens, the heaven fled away, and there was no found no place for them. Well, apparently. John, in prophecy, is looking out yonder and he is seeing something that is yet to be. Well, is there scripture to back that? Oh, I'm glad you asked. Thank you for adding time to my sermon. Go to the book of Acts with me real quick so you can see in your Bible. Acts chapter number 17, very quickly. If you'll hurry, we'll get there and move on, give you a couple more thoughts, and hopefully shout and rejoice a little bit here in just a moment. But Acts chapter number 17, I want you to look at this uh, very quickly. Look at verse number 30. The Bible says this, And the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Why? Because he hath appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man. Oh, I like that man. Hallelujah to God. It's Jesus going to be sitting on that throne. It's the man Christ Jesus who is our go-between. He's sitting upon this throne. It's a confirmed date that every person who rejects him will bow before the very God of heaven and say, okay, thou art God. Amen. Well, I've been playing the game. You won't there. Amen. You won't there. Stay with me, please. You say, are you trying to be mean? Oh, no. I'm trying to help us this morning. I'm trying to give you something that will help us. We see a confirmed date. We not only see that John saw the greatest of horrors, but real quickly, we see that John saw the gloom of hopelessness. In verses 12, 13, 14, and 15, ladies and gentlemen, is a picture of what I feel is one of the most gruesome times that there could ever be. See, these people, the Bible says, number one, notice those summoned to appear. They are identified. Who are they? They're dead. That's what your Bible... Wait, 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 wait. How can dead appear before God? The same way you're going to appear before God. 
I'm going to tell you in just a moment. But these dead, they stand before God. Who are these dead? Well, you'll find rulers in amongst this group who defied God. You'll find religions who tried to keep the religions of this world to make their way to heaven. And they'll, they'll face God and realize that he said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the light. No man cometh unto the Father but by me, the Bible says. They'll realize that. Uh, you'll see the righteous who have done all of their good works, who have tried to pretty themselves up only to stand before God naked and ashamed. Religious people who have played the game of church. You said you said religion. Yes, I did. Now you're saying, yes, I said religious. What am I talking about? I'm talking about those people who come and sit on a God-fearing church pew. A pew where the gospel is preached. Where the book is proclaimed. Where they sing those songs of Zion. Where we testify about the goodness of God in our life. And they sit on the pew and they know not God. No, not God. No, not God. What a sad thought. There'll be rejectors, but watch this. There'll be some of our relatives that will be summoned to appear. They're identified, but preacher, they're also immortalized. What do you mean? Remember over in there, First Corinthians, you all right? You all right? You with me? I'm almost done. You remember over in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, the Bible talks about the saints are going to be caught up and this corruption shall put on and this mortal shall put on immortality. What's that all about? That's this, this, this body we have is no longer a flesh that we have to contend with. It becomes uncorruptible I wish you wouldn't have done that that got me excited right there because I'm going to tell you one day I won't have to face this most stinking body anymore and fight with it anymore this corruption will put on incorruption but watch this this mortal shall put on immortality we're summoned we're changed in the air the Bible says on this day every person who knows not God will be summoned, caught up, and they will take on, listen, immortality. Well, what do you mean by that? Their body will never be able to be destroyed. Well, what's the significance of that? They'll feel the pain of fire. They'll feel the, uh, and know the sufferings of hell forever. It will never cease to be immortalized. The dead, small and great, stand before God. I'm hurrying, preacher. I'm almost dead. We see they are indicted. He judges them for their works. And the sea gave up the dead, and 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 death and hell delivered up the uh, uh, dead. Uh, uh, delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. What's missing? The blood. What's missing? The blood. What's missing? The blood. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. But on this day, there is no blood present in their life. And they stand without the blood of Jesus Christ. And he condemns them, indicts them. No blood, no entrance. Oh, you believe that bloody religion? Yes! Yes, I believe that bloody religion. Yes, my sins, though they be as scarlet. Yes, though they be red like crimson. They shall be as white as snow. They shall. They shall be white. I'm saying hallelujah. Yes, I believe in that bloody religion of Jesus Christ. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin the only way that I can be saved is by his precious blood Amen. they're indicted why they have works but they have no blood are you listening to me I'm saying 
We see John said, I saw the greatest of horrors. He said, I saw the gloom of hopelessness. But oh, dear friend, watch this. He said, I saw the graciousness of his heart. Where do you see graciousness in this story, preacher? Read with me verse 15, would you? And please hold on because I'm liable to have a conniption. Verse number 15 says, And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast in the lake of fire. Can I ask you? As an individual, I'll get it up. Uh, can I ask you as an individual, when you read that particular verse, what is the focus of that verse to you? What is the focus of it? And whosoever is not found written in the book of life shall be cast in the lake of fire. To me, the emphasis seems to be on the lake of fire, but not so. No, 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 no. See, John is the author here. And John is the one who penned John, the book of John. That took a lot for me to figure that one out. A lot of college work to figure out who wrote the book of John. You're not going to laugh anyway. I told you I couldn't tell a joke good. Uh, but John, John is the author of John. And John is the one who eight times in his book said, Who saw ever? <laughs> who saw ever? There's a direct link here. He said, and he said they're already cast in this uh, lake of fire. This is second death. Isn't that what he said the verse just before? Yeah. Now he's repeating and he said, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast in the lake of fire. This is the why? Because whosoever. John chapter number 3 verse number 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son come on get with me here that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have whoo, hallelujah to God should have everlasting life whosoever whosoever surely meaneth me surely meaneth me oh surely meaneth me hey man he's drawing a connection here notice two things and I'm done got a couple people excited maybe we'll get the rest of you we saw his gracious heart she requires or reveals an inquiry <coughs> in essence this is what that passage is saying. The first verse just before the prior verse, these people were cast in the lake of fire. Is that what it says? Which is the... And then John says, and whosoever was not found written in that book was cast in the lake of fire. He says, John is saying... Can I borrow your imagination a second? Will you, are you all right? Come on, are you, are you all right? You're not dead on me yet, are you? He says, so John is saying, here's your name there. Sir, I saw a great white throne. I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. But I saw His gracious heart. And whoever is your name there? Yeah. Sir, is your name there? Ma'am, little boy, little girl, is your name there? See, it doesn't matter where you write your name. It matters has Jesus Christ yeah. written your name in the Lamb's book of life. Yeah. And that takes me to the second thing. I don't even know what my point is. But I'm just going to say hallelujah. I know my name is written oh, there. Yeah. Oh, it says here, my name is in the book of life. Yeah. Oh, get them things on oh my name is in the book of life oh bless the name of Jesus I uh, rise above all doubt and strife and read my title clear I know I know my name is there I know hallelujah to God I'm a whosoever my name it's been written down it's written down in irascible ink it'll never be erased from his book I'm just saying John said I just want to show you even in the midst of all of this horror and gloom the wonderful gracious heart 
of our Savior who said, Is your name there? Is your name there? Is your name there? And I'm glad I can look at John and say, I know, I know my name is written there. It's a horrible day coming. Oh, thank God for His wondrous grace.